Welcome to Selling in the Motor Trade in association with Automotive Management and Simcoe Training. This is the weekly podcast where we share best practice, tips, and ideas on how to sell more cars, improve your service department, and generally put more profit into your dealership or dealer group. I'm your host, Simon Bokert, or some of you might already know me as Skippy. And firstly, I want to say thank you for taking the time to tune in. So, so that's the book. Um, tell me about the TED Talk then. Did you follow on from the book? Well, I had written the book and then okay. I did my TED Talk. Um, and the, and uh, you guys, if you're looking for something funny to watch, please do. It's um, I was in Scottsdale, Arizona. You can't miss it. And it's, <laughs> it's a very funny one. But I go through my life, like being a kid and all the way through and just great scenarios as far as things that we've encountered. And I know, Simon, you've got some funny stories too. Well, listen, that's, um, I suppose that's what we do as trainers. We collect these stories, don't we? Uh, that's but what stories, I, uh, people listen to the stories, don't they? They open up there. Uh, I think a good trainer is a good storyteller. And that's yeah. the difference between people that, that can actually walk the walk. I take phone up TOs all the time. What am I doing? I love it. People yeah. are so, they're so serious today. You know, it's like, do you have the car in stock? And oh. so, um, anyways. But, but yeah. also, isn't a good salesperson a good storyteller as should well, be, though? Should be. Yep. Be. absolutely and you can tell the bad ones that's where we talk about certain stories you're going to like oh dear this is not good not going to bode well yeah so mr milstead and i have uh, been talking about writing a road warrior book the stories from the road so ah the road warrior book there's so many stories out there aren't they mm-hmm. just so- change the names to protect the innocent <laughs> oh yes oh yes so- someone's got to write a sitcom about the motor trade the, the characters we have in the motor trade. Uh, I don't know if there is one out there in the world. I'm sure someone's going to hear me now and say, no, there's definitely one there. But um, yeah, uh, there's one that just was released here and I, it doesn't look very good. I think you just, it's all about the writers. And then look at Seinfeld. I mean, great actors. Yeah. You know, that that was really how, you know, how they rocked it and good writers. So yeah, I would That's love to good. do that. That's good. So listen, I want to ask you about um, the motor trade going forward. Okay. We all know the customer's buying journey starts online nowadays. That's it. Uh, there's lots of companies out there like Carvana. Over here, we have Carzu. Carvana has gone from, um, what was it, 95% they've lost in their market cap recently. Um, I, I just want to get your views on that. Um, are people just going to click and collect in the future? Is there a place so. for us? Or is click and collect, is it dead now? Are people going to realize they're going to go back to dealerships? I want to get your views on uh, the, the buying process now from the consumer. Yeah. I, first off, I don't think we can ever, or we shouldn't go into the, is it, is it over or not? You know, mm-hmm. there's always going to be a middle path. And that's, that's really where dealers have struggled so much is that, that they, <laughs> they always wanted people to buy the way they want. You know, I was like, yeah. I want you in my showroom. I'm like, well, maybe they don't want to come in the showroom. So then yeah. what we did was we, we created this pretend infrastructure as if we're really great at selling remote, which we really, most dealers were not. not so then they get caught in that mess. Um, you have to, you have to let consumers buy the way they want, or shop the way they want. Yeah. My great, my greatest concern um, in this year is that that our cars are being built so well, which is awesome. The mm-hmm. problem is that we relied upon that repetitive service and the repetitive interaction mm. uh, to to retain, and we won't have that ever again. Yeah. Because cars are just going to get better and better and better, which means now I won't see you for eight months. Yep. You know how often you need to speak with someone, and I don't mean email. Do you know how often you need to speak with someone to build loyalty? Any idea? No, I don't know. Uh, so you're talking uh, a face-to-face conversation or phone, not email. Oh. Yep, I get phone. Because yeah, we uh, rely upon uh, email campaigns too much. Like, uh, in the B2B world, we'd normally say seven times. So what, what would be the figure with customers? Okay, so a sold or unsold opportunity, because that's the big thing is that if a person doesn't buy from you, you still should build a relationship. Mm-hmm. So you need to speak live to that person every 90 days to build loyalty, every 90 days. And and truly, and I'm not going to sell, but um, I'm happy to provide it. I have tons of war tracks that I wrote a whole new uh, contact pattern for 2023, which is important. Can, and can I stop you? Can I stop, sorry, Joan. I love what you said there. You said yeah. loyalty, not satisfaction. Because as an industry, aren't we measuring the wrong thing? I mean, w- would you prefer your partner to be satisfied or loyal? I mean, mm. it's loyalty. Isn't that what we need? It and is, but that's why this yeah. whole thing about, you know, at least like, are you completely satisfied? Always remember, a completely satisfied customer will still shop other stores. Exactly. A loyal person will stay with you, but we can't assume loyalty. The yeah. other thing is this, 
really smart thing I came up with. I love when I'm smart and not dumb. So um, when you when you help someone with a purchase of a vehicle, mm-hmm. smart thing is what? 72 hours after purchase, customer care calls. Mm-hmm. They should be calling in 24. We know that. But whether they do or don't and so on, I don't know. But 72 hours after, so we make sure they have service and so on. But then I do this. Simon, in appreciation of your recent purchase, I'm authorized to offer your other drivers in your household a free oil change or an oil change coupon or whatever you want to do. But guess what? Simon, who are the other drivers? And is it best to reach them on their seller work? I will automatically get his wife, his daughter, his son, and then I build a relationship there. We can go this way or we can go what? Old school guys, guess what we do? We rely upon ego. And my ego says, Simon likes me. And when Simon's wife's ready to buy, Simon will bring her into me. I'm like, what is that? Get rid of all that. Get rid of the ego. Let's let's go factual. Because then you'll blow up your service department. You, I mean, it works so well. Yeah, I absolutely love that. It's that referral again. Again, my experience, salespeople don't ask referrals because they're scared of rejection. But yeah, wait a minute, it's so silly. How can yeah. you be afraid of the word no when you're in sales? Like, what does that mean? Yeah, I, you yeah. see it though. I know, but it's like you're 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 comfortable to say this is a really good deal for eight hundred fifty dollars a month for the next eighty four months. That's not uncomfortable. I'm going to see. Or my favorite, like I I pick up the phone and I call and I go, I may speak to Bob, and they go, that's the wrong number, Bob. There's no Bob here. What do people do? Yeah, hang up the phone. I never do. I apologize and say, well, who am I speaking with? Did I catch you at a bad time? What kind of car do you drive? Since I have you on the phone, you may be the hottest lead I have. So that's yeah. what happens. Is that BDCs are staffed with the wrong people. You want to know how to find a good candidate? Here's a great question oh, to ask. Would, would I be wrong to say that call centers are sometimes stacked with people who are, oh, I'm going to offend people here, but cheap? And so many times I see that where they say, well, we can get the cheapest people in the call center. We don't have to pay them the same as a salesperson, but that's the front door of the dealership. Have I got that wrong? You don't have it wrong. But the big thing where, where we have it wrong consistently in our industry is we, we pay them wrong. Yeah. I get, I, and I have arguments all the time with every BDC consult because I'm the only one that believes this. I do not believe in bonusing a BDC rep, customer care rep for appointments at Shell. It's ridiculous. Why? That's your job is to get an appointment at Shell. So, so I don't understand. To me, that's a false sense of accomplishment. Mm-hmm. And it also does what? It divides your floor because salespeople start to be like, oh, this is a customer complaint because he gets 10, 10 bucks for getting him in the door. I'm like, oh my God, stop. So don't don't pay me bonuses to get him in. That's what you do. And I've never met a dealer excited to go, here's a check for Marianne to bring in, oh, buy it, you know, whatever, 50 people. I didn't sell a card. You pick that check. No. And the dealer starts thinking, I have to go shut it down. And be, ah, silly. Pay me what? Pay me a bonus for people that buy. Mm-hmm. Now I'm on the same page. Oh, and by the way, pay me more for what? Self-generated leads that buy. Yeah, hence referrals again. They right, make so here referrals. we go. So an internet lead, I'm sorry, anybody can set an appointment with the guy that goes, I'm on your website. Yeah, yeah. You, know, you, know, you have this car, it's like, well, that's a tough one. I mean, come on, you know, no, yeah. no. But if I ask an internet lead who they knew and I get that person in the running, I want it to be strong. And if you do that the right way, your BDC team will become incredible prospectors. Well, listen, so, I, I want to talk about, because you guys seem to be so much further ahead than some of the other markets we work in. And again, I hope I'm not offending some of our current clients at the moment, but I want to get your views on, an inquiry comes through, okay? Internet lead there. You've got the call center, the BDC deals with it, and then they've got to pass it to the sales team. And I always have this concern. Whenever there's a pass in a game of football, there's a chance of a fumble. So I want to get your views on, should hmm. the call center take them out of the market there and then people want the information now or should we turn all the salespeople into call center because surely we know that people don't walk in now that everyone starts with the digital inquiry or phone i mean okay, wait, are, a minute, wait a minute they're so walking, you're looking for the toilets they're looking for still, directions to the hotel CR- down the road <laughs> you still see crms that will go like source drive by nobody drive by what does he buy cars i mean come on so yeah, here's yeah. your here's your problem though and this is where this is where dealers screw up do not let your BDC assign that appointment to a salesperson. Don't round robin to your salespeople. Are you insane? What you're doing is you're you're eliminating what? Your managers. Mm. So all appointments are made directly for management. Management, managers, you guys run your floor. I don't want to pick or choose. If I did, I would always make my appointments for the guy that could close. <laughs> I, mean, I would never be fair. I mean, why? So it, it is not. You can't skip management. So everything goes to managers. They decide who and what. I also believe this. 
if you're going to let a BDC team member work the deal, well, now you're in trouble, okay? Because they're going to run into objections and things they can't handle. And I don't want a BDC member going that far. The glory of having customer care is that I can't quote prices. I can't do anything. All I can do is what? Act fine, get needs and wants, set an, a sense of urgency, maybe buying their car and get them in for an appointment immediately. Okay. So I don't, I don't work out. And if I get that guy that's like, you said, I'm not coming in unless I get the best price. I would say I completely understand. As you're aware, pricing comes from management. Now they're currently we're helping other guests. Once you do get the best price in the state of wherever, the mm -hmm. country of wherever, um, are you free to come in today at three or four? So we are an appointment setting team. Mm -hmm. I don't go through the deep like rebates and pricing. I'm like, well, no. Then, then let's call it an internet department because that's what yeah. they are. They're selling their car. Yeah, okay. Okay, and, and there are some people who will go down that route. And I always right. think if you want to do that as a dealer, hey, you've got to have in that incident department a sales manager, a business manager. They totally have different. to be able to do all of that. And it's a completely different, totally different model. But here's yes. the problem with that. Yep. Hmm. Think about it. Who the heck would work in that store if you're not part of the internet team? Then? Although but, these are internet. not now. So, but so I that's mean, where every I team. Everyone's <laughs> part of the internet team now. The That's internet, what I mean. I mean like, it's what? a different door. <laughs> Patrick, Patrick Tessier, great friend of the uh, the podcast. And uh, I think you've met Patrick Tessier out in Australia there. I have. Uh, and he says, again, we have two doors in the dealership, the traditional door and the internet door, the back door. But the front door is getting shut now. The front it door, it's right. not even there. It's the only door. And he's dead right the way he says that, I think. But you have to be careful, though, because here's the biggest thing. Always, I say, visualize like a wheel. And there are spokes, right? So so internet leads are only one spoke. A BDC team is not about this. But what? How about my prior solds? What about my service customer database? What about people that what? Oh, yes. And leasing a car. So all those call scenarios funnel in. This isn't the, otherwise the dealer goes crazy because all they hear is, I'd make more appointments if you got me more leads. I'm like, I got 40,000 people in my database. Do something with it, right? It's so it's hire a better consultant and then they'll get where they need to be. I love the idea that you talk about the BDC. Um, they're actually self-generating leads as well. They're actually speaking <laughs> the service department, okay? Uh, I, I love that every time, how many cars in your close circle and friends and family, I, of those, which is the next to change, that is where they need to work. Well, so a, a strong BDC team member does what? Tomorrow, and I don't care if I'm sales focused, I always do it. I can change my hat. Mm. So if I'm speaking to a selling lead goes cold and I go, hey, they, they do need service. I don't transfer them. Are you kidding me? Humans hate transfers. Yeah. So just book a service appointment. How tough is that, right? And you don't want your service advisors taking calls because why? They diagnose. They're always going into a little thing about, well, I think it could cost you 500. I'm like, shut the front door. So yeah. don't do that. So a neutral party is so much better. But part of my job is I call tomorrow's service customers. And whether I have a revenue tab or not, anything that's at least a couple of years old, I'm going to say, Simon, why your vehicle's here, we will provide you a free appraisal. Note mm -hmm. the difference. I never say, is it okay if we do an appraisal in your car? Mm -hmm. I say, we will provide you a free appraisal, which means you'll know the value. And if you did decide to upgrade, what's missing? So we check the pulse, try and mm -hmm. get some kind of a selling lead. That's smart. But again, customer care works all facets of that consumer's potential automotive needs. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I like it okay. to be so smart. It only took 30 years. <laughs> hey, hey, listen, when, when, when people are um, inquiring on that used vehicle, um, mm -hmm. we all know that video is, uh, listen, mm -hmm. it's, it's the now, if you're not doing this, it's all about speed of response. We need to get back through that very, very quickly uh, just to get that. And, um, but, uh, and again, I want to get your views on this. I think there's been some of us being sold, sold the magic dream of, I'm going to call it the magic button. And the magic button is where someone goes online, they look at the video of the car, they click here, they get the finance figures, they find out what it is, they click here and they buy it and the car turns up at their door. Uh, I think there is a place for people who will do that. Absolutely, there is, but you can't go. Yeah, is the magic button working now? With the uh, um, kazoos of the world, the Carvanas of the world, it would appear they're strong. I wouldn't talk about Carvana right now. It's not going so Oh, bad. They, uh, they uh, because their model is the magic button, aren't they? From start to finish. And is is it the demise? I, I don't want to use the word demise, but their share price is 97% down. Does that mean that the magic button doesn't work? Do we just need to get people back like we always have into the dealership physically? Again, I'm going to tell you, you can't. we can't be black and white. There will always be people that want to do that process. Yep. However, you have to look at the majority of people are probably not comfortable with that. 
You know, I say you have to, you have to offer both. You cannot be the one dimensional. This is how we do it. Or the guy that believes like everybody shops and buys online directly. Go, no, not everybody does. So you have to offer both ends and be prepared to support them. It's huge. Um, I don't know. It's interesting because like the number one uh, process for demoing a vehicle is by going on YouTube, which is very interesting. So yeah. if you think about number of del- eliminating that, you know, the chance to come in for a demo. So how do we help people? Biggest thing is, is this word flexibility. Yeah. In other but- words, understand that most people, no matter what, when they inquire in a vehicle, the answer they'll buy something else. So yep. if we always keep that in mind, then why the heck do we always say things like, oh, we sold that car. No, no, we don't have that. I go, but they're not buying it. But you just shut your door. Why would you do that? So yeah. if, if Simon says, hey, you have the 2019 Honda Accord, I would say, you know what? She must be reaching out about a promotion that we've got going on. To my knowledge, it's available. But when you mention a 19, obviously you look at a 2021 20, or even brand new, if it was affordable, correct? Yep. Yeah. I got that game ready. goes, well, yeah, I love a new car. Oh, there you go. I suppose you, I sold that one two weeks ago, you know, or my favorite. We bring in this customer on the 19 who says, yeah, I'd love something newer. They walk in the door. They go, hi, I have a VIP appointment. That's code for BDC. And the guy goes, okay, I can help you. And he goes, yeah, I talked to Joni on that 19. He goes, ah, I don't know why they brought you in. You sold it already. I'm like, wow, you're so skilled. <laughs> <laughs> you're amazing. We should make you a manager. <laughs> yeah. yeah, sold. BDC's got that wrong again. They absolutely. Yeah, yeah, my favorite. Oh my God, this is so bad. This is my personality. So I had this manager once to send us at a store and he came in the BDC and he was angry, right? He's like, why'd you bring this customer? And he's in the show and he's yelling at me. And I looked at him and said, oh my gosh. I said, I apologize. I said, I had you confused with somebody that knew how to sell cards. <laughs> <laughs> That's your personality then. You've it got is. To I was like, wow. I mean, what is it? Yeah, wow. Every take it down. The main thing is this. You don't want to build heat. But the reality is that unless it's an immediate appointment, be a manager that actually looks at the content of people coming in and be prepared. And if you don't want to have them in, then you can cancel it a weekend. It's all right. But assume availability. Assume you can help them. And the worst thing is what? I've always said, if I don't have what you want, we may buy your car and put cash in your pocket. Mm-hmm. Build yep. inventory. Well, it's something that um, I do believe uh, over here, 89% of people in a franchise dealership have got a car they can trade or part exchange, depending on what country you're living in. So um, actually, that's just part of and it, it's kind of like I'm going back in town. Um, you, we always know that third party negotiation better. If I say your car's worth $16,000 pounds, euros, and they don't like it, they don't like me. Then if I say Bob, the sales manager, says your car's worth sixteen, now we've got a problem. They don't like Bob and the whole dealership. So why would you do that? Why are we not saying, hey, listen, Bob's going to do a bit of research in your car. He's great at getting the best price here. He's going to contact a few independent buyers. See, cars sometimes have a regional value. Okay. Now, now, listen, we work within a market. We don't create the market. Let them be unhappy with the market. Not your dealership, not Bob, the sales manager, or you, the salesperson. Okay, but think about this. Then why is it when someone inquires, I don't care if it's on a chat, an email, in person, on a phone, when they say, what's the best price on a vehicle? What do you think most people respond? Uh, I, well, I know exactly what they respond, okay? I, number one, they shut the door. That is the best price because, you know, we we price it competitively, so that's it. Uh, bye. I that's know, what like, they- whatever. I know. It's like, so what? what or, or number two, sorry. Or number two, I hear this all the time. Well, it's up for 39995. What were you hoping to pay for it? There you oh, go. There you fuck go. Fuck an offer to buy <laughs> so, then, so then, how would you, how should they respond? So hey, listen, price? Yeah, listen, the best price is firstly, we've got to see is that vehicle available? Alice, hey, what was about that car that caught your attention? Or what's about that car that put it on your shopping list? Hey, listen, okay. I'm only one of 30 salespeople who could actually secure that car. Hey, listen, can I ask you, if that car has been secured, what else do you see on our website that caught your attention? I think we got to open it up. Okay. Okay. And I would go really simple. So when no, someone says, what's the best price? My response is, when's the last time you had a chance to drive that vehicle? Yeah. So think about it because it's short, sweet. And the guy goes, well, I haven't driven it. I just want your best price. And I would say, great. You know what? I'm more than happy to get your best price. Mm-hmm. Um, but if I provide it to you and then you drive it um, and you don't like it, this will be a waste of your time. So always remember the biggest objection consumers have, it's not about shopping cars because it's the hassle of the money. It's about time. Yeah, it's an yeah. element of time. So feed into that objection right away. 
because you'll get them to test drive before they worry about it. Because yeah. remember, think, if you drive it and you love it, then you're, you'll pay anything. We all go in and buy, like, I'm going to buy a pair of boots and spending $200, that's it. And then what? I got $400, I go, I got I to gotta, I gotta find a way to make it work. So short and sweet to the point. Yeah. Well, I tell you what, there's um, there's something, again, I want to get your views on. Over the last three years since the pandemic, you didn't have to be a genius to sell a used car because the supply was such an issue. New car supply, we had semiconductors, wiring looms, okay? The whole sales process was, uh, yeah, it's available. You want it? If not, I've got three other people who want it. No, nope. next. And I think over the last three years, we've had lots of people that either lost the ability to sell at worst. Or never had it yeah, because they worked in an environment they just didn't have to sell the car. So little things that you and I know instinctively, like getting the figures right, it's the easiest part of my job. But unless that car's exactly right for you, no price is going to be good enough. So when's a good time to get together? I think we have an industry where lots of people just haven't had to do that over the last okay, three see, years. This is a problem, though, with them. Um, gosh, I love, I mean, I love car dealers. I do. Yeah. Um, and I've worked with some amazing and some that were awful. Um, I know there was a gentleman down in, um, he's no longer in business, shocking, but in Albuquerque, New Mexico, and he had me come in because he said, I think there's a hiccup in my business. So I came in and spent a day and it was like two seconds into the day and knew exactly what the problem was. So at the end of the day, he brought me into the big boardroom with all the men and the managers and they were, looked at me and said, so what did you find out? And I looked at each manager and I go, <laughs> I did a hiccup, right? Because they were the problem. And he looked at me and goes, if you weren't a lady, I'd throw you out of here. I said, well, I've been thrown out of better places. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. So true. So at the end of the day, dealers are going to have to invest. The problem is this. They're going to buy cheap training because they want to do it cheap. Um, but be careful who you hire. Hire mm -hmm. someone very strong uh, because they're going to have to start investing in the education point. Because if they have the skill set, it is so dulled. They, they have no idea again. And you're going to have to learn to be an amazing communicator to build your customer base. You are. And to retain it. Yeah. Um, it's um, I, We know that um, technology can change in a heartbeat. Mm -hmm. But for me, human nature does not. Nah. Uh, I mean, you know, they have planes now that can take off, do the whole flight and land when mm -hmm. they have the pilot touching a single mm -hmm. control. Mm -hmm. I don't know about you, but I'm not ready to get on a plane without a pilot sitting there. I, yeah. I think we want the pilot there for when things go. Are you okay with the driverless wrong. cars though? Are you okay with driverless uh, cars? Listen, I um, um I got to say that it's. I, I think our kids will be. Oh, uh, I mean, and I'm okay with it. I would love. Yeah. It. I think it'd be great. You yeah. don't have those stupid conversations. So <laughs> from the local area, I'm like, oh, you know, how am I know. I don't have to talk to anybody. This is awesome. I'm good with it. Now the long haul truck drivers will be kind of interesting. They'll shut yeah. down all those CD, you know, truck stops. Yes. <laughs> That'd yeah. be a good thing to get rid of. Hey, but listen, the, the world is changing. We know the agency sales okay. model is on the on the mm -hmm. uh, horizon over there. Uh, Australian people listen to this in the podcast. We know what uh, Honda, Mercedes, Benz. We spoke to the chairman of the Australian Automotive Dealers Association, and we all know about what's happened with the court case in Mercedes uh, in Europe. Um, every manufacturer is looking, and when I say every manufacturer, most manufacturers are looking at the agency model. I, I think this is going to really uh, change. I, um, there's some people who say, is it going to work or not? Uh, the jury's out on that, but I think the manufacturers are definitely going to look at that side of it. Uh, how do you think agency is going to affect where people shop around? If it's fixed price, that's the price of the car wherever they go. Um, how is that going to affect the deal? I don't know. I, I think a lot about, um, because we tried that here with the Saturn, mm -hmm. the Saturn vehicle price structure was like it was non-negotiated and every dealer had agreed with that and then guess what happened? Yeah, somebody started breaking the rules. So I'm like, mm, I don't know about the my way, highway, one way only. I, I don't think our world is built like that. Mm. I think you have to have flexibility. But it, what I, I believe is that there needs to be a revamp as far as how you schedule your sales associates, what their days are. We got to get way away from the come to work and figure it out. Um, but why would you have, you know, 10 salespeople on a sales floor on a Tuesday morning with, with one appointment? I mean, it makes no sense because there are not drive by mm. customers. Yeah. So you need to you need to staff according to confirmed appointments and what your show ratio is. Yeah. And you and need to make sure that you have a find you find a way to actually have that pipeline filled. Because I always say dealers work with me because guess what? It's not about how many calls you make and how many engagements. It's about Joni. <laughs> this is how they talk. Joni. 
I need to have 25 appointments, you know, every weekday and I have to have 50 on a Saturday. And that's what I, that's what we do. We work on an appointment basis. That's it. Because after that, and I get to show in, then it's up to them to figure out the rest. Yeah. It's, um, it'd be interesting to see how, um, how that whole agency model uh, changes uh, there. I, I mean, every manufacturer is definitely looking at that. And it would appear that last time was the NADA, and I, I get on a plane tomorrow, is it? Next day, I'm, I'm so looking forward to this year's NADA. Uh, right. I just want there, there doesn't seem to be a lot of <gasps> talk yet in America about agency, but it no. seems to be creeping up there. Um, it seems to be creeping up. So we'll be, I'd be really be interesting. Thing. interesting. Well, yeah. we have to be careful too that. Um... I mean, there's a lot in, in the States as far as the big rumor out, as far as, you know, manufacturers trying to get rid of the dealer and mm. the selling points and to buy directly from the manufacturer. And yep. we got a lot, a yep. lot of um, yeah. very uncomfortable and some yep. angry people. So some of those, some of those meetings in it, at any day may not be too comfortable. For the I, I, I think you're dead right. Let's look at what Ford has said and what's happening there, because at the end of the day, it's really who owns the customer, isn't it? And it's mm. uh, under agency, of course, the OEM owns the customer so i know i know and then you look at it and think there's just there's a lot of heart and soul and sweat that's yep. gone into building that relationship no come on there's some dealers that probably should not be there and they'll probably yep. be gone um yep. but there's some that are really they're excellent and they and they work hard and mean it they know what they say and i yeah. appreciate those individuals oh it'll be definitely interesting to see how this whole plays out there um um with the world of evs and how that's changing what's going to happen there i think it's interesting it's um but it's lots of change and lots of opportunity for people i don't think we should be scared about it but we just need to alter when and if it comes and how it comes over there we just know it's a it's a tide that can't be turned in europe uh, at the moment because it's my, it's coming yeah i know it's yeah, here. My, yeah, yeah i mean and quite frankly i mean i don't know who's afraid of change i love change i think if it's the same day every day it's a boring so bring it on yeah that's it hey listen the other question then is what about staff turnover uh since the pandemic um mm -hmm. anecdotally i have no numbers for this but it appears that we're finding it harder and harder to get people to want to work the hours we want to work now hey listen when i started i was you know i started 17 years old okay i i come to europe in 95 and it was like i, I didn't want to take my days off I would work the seven days a week because, hey, if I wasn't there on the Sunday, I didn't get the leads. If I didn't get the leads, I couldn't work them through the rest of the week. But I don't think the youth wants to do that anymore. Are you finding oh, it hard? Be, be to careful. Be careful, yeah. though, because you're making a blanket statement. They, they, yeah. there, may be, there may be some people. First off, there are a lot of people that worked it, that hated it. They did it because it was the only way. The only yeah. thing I you're off on a Thursday. It's like, do you really think you can deserve to take your day off? Like, what is that? So you need you need to have two different pathways. So there should be a model where a person can say, hey, maybe I want to work 30 hours. Mm -hmm. uh, the biggest problem with working the, the long days is that they're non-productive. I mean, that's yeah. all. It's so boring. It's like, what are we doing here? So, yep. um, and again, it's like, hey, I, I want a comfortable pay structure. If I'm a sales associate, where I'd rather be on a salary. And I can see the difference between if I was on commission, you know, mm -hmm. and, and that type of thing. But there should be a different pathway. You can give me two choices. Why only one? You know, and why do I have to work? 60 hour what is that because again we're not working so if i came to work and i had an appointment every three hours my day would be phenomenal oh yes why you have to go on and you run but but why you figured out you know you need a strong appointment setting team you do who, who was it was it um joe um joe verde it might have been grant cardone said come to work to work don't come to work to wait now, i'm not tom sure who, it was that tom was stuker Tom Stuka, Tom, yeah. Grant said it because he heard it from Tom. But yeah. Ah, fair enough. Fair enough. Oh, I got it. Yeah. Oh, no, I but it's it. so true. Tom is dead right. Okay. Come to work to work. Don't come work to work to wait. So, uh, so hey, we're going to ask you the question. Uh, Stuka, same surname. Is uh, uh, Tom, you, uh, there must be a relationship there. Of course oh, my God. I come know. Come on, do you of already know? Of course I it. know. You're only seeing it because my joke that I say. So if yeah, I'm training, I know. Let's, let's tell everyone else how you and Tom. Uh, I know, but it's. It's so funny because people go, hey, are you related to the Bob Suker? <laughs> well, it was Tom. I said, and he's my father. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Sorry, Tom would Tom. love that. Yes. Oh, he's, he's heard it before. He's like, that's oh, not yeah. funny. I said, I think it's hilarious. Anyway, Tom and I were married for a long time. Both felt long. Yeah. <laughs> I, I can hear him almost saying that that's not funny at all but it's uh, exactly. and I, can, I can hear you wind him up too with it mm -hmm. uh, absolutely it. so Love um it. yeah so long and and it's it's just wonderful and I think that um if you're going to stay in this game then be a game changer you know don't don't just ride the wave because that's 
point. Okay, now wrapping up, uh, your dealer listened to this journey. Can I ask you, um, or let me ask in a different way. Let's say you go and buy your own dealer group or dealership, mm -hmm. okay? Over the next two years, what would you focus on? Now, I'm sure you've probably answered lots of it throughout this podcast, but if you are this, and I'm driving out, if you're the manager listening to this, if you're the owner listening to this, what should they go back and focus in on their dealership or their dealer group now? We'll be very, very careful about titles because what mm. we do is when I'm a titled manager, then I'm an assumed authority of. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's really hard for a sales manager to say, like, I don't know how to overcome that objection. Or I can't handle a phone up well. I have no idea how to go to, oh, my God, my favorite, a manufacturer. Send to your list every month, gentlemen and women. And most of us, what? Circle file it. Or we attempt and do a brutal job of going, like, oh, I see your, your lease is coming to term in two years. You want to come in now? I mean, like, what? <laughs> no. So communication skill is the most important thing. It's more important than anything. Mm -hmm. I don't care. I, I don't know anything about cars. Why am I hired? Oh, I, I, I'm a General Motors turkey vendor. I don't know their cars. I mean, do I care? No, I care about people. And I need to understand that what? Tell, tell us, your, sorry, uh, sorry, your General Motors key vendor. Uh, we don't have that in Europe. Can you explain what that is for a second? Yeah, so there are um, a certain few and, and you know, you're pretty lucky, but you're a turnkey vendor. So in other words, dealers can actually they go to the site and you're recommended by them and okay. they earn, you know, money and things back and forth by utilizing people like myself and my team. Okay. So it's important and, and it's huge. Um, but I would go back if it were me and I would, I would test my skill set. And if anybody listening, I'm happy to provide those testing for them. Uh, I have it for every lead source, every opportunity, and also how they manage people. Mm -hmm. And then I created a really great daily work plan. Uh, it's a worksheet for sales associates. Because the biggest thing that happens too in stores is that you've got this, let's say, a great customer care team generating all these leads. Awesome. What do you see your salespeople doing? They're sitting there what on their phone yeah. Yeah, yeah, waiting. Yeah, yeah. Okay, I'm going to stop that. So BDC never meant do not call. It means everybody get better. Mm -hmm. Right. And you have to look at your schedules and, and note this, please. Never get anyone. Don't go in your CRM and say, well, after 120 days, you mark them lost, you know, mm -hmm. and they go away into the, are you kidding me? That's, that's oh, no, 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 Joni, they forward them to follow them up in 2042. Okay. But, yeah, like, yeah, 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 yeah. And then they go, like, are you the market? Like, oh my God. Oh my gosh. So, <laughs> so like I said before, whether they buy or not, it's every 90 days. And then it's, I look at my service side, which is huge. I'm really, really worried about a lot of dealers because they're not going to have that service retention without a lot of smart work. Mm -hmm. And they cannot expect advisors to do that because if you think sales associates hate the phone, wait till you get an advisor on that, right? Mm -hmm. So it's important that we actually set a pattern to, to build our business. And my favorite thing, like I've said, gosh, a little small store is always said that to me. I'm a small dealer. I go, you don't need to be a small, you're thinking small, right? Okay. You know, it's much easier to be a smaller operation and to make it grow than to take on. I mean, I worked for Alpen Ford, you know, and put in their BDC for three years. It's so huge, right? What's funny is that they still have like 4,000 cars in inventory and I still had salespeople going, yeah, they didn't buy because they didn't have anything they wanted. I go, huh, 4,000 4, cars. Ah, yeah, 4, cars. Like, yeah, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, this is great because I took a phone up there once and it was a, a gentleman on a used um, expedition. Mm -hmm. And of course, it's like, hey, obviously consider it suburban. He's like, yeah, yeah, very open. But he arrived and he got out of the car and he said, I talked to Joni and she said, you have that expedition. And here we go again. Guys, are, I don't know why oh, she I said that. One of those 3,999 cars all around going, I did go up to him and say, I think we want to elevate you to management. <laughs> <laughs> your leadership skills are blowing me away sir <laughs> <laughs> i love your sarcasm there oh my, okay. god. Oh my like... gosh exactly so i was in um, milwaukee and i took a phone up and it was an old gentleman and it was a kind of like he had to yell so he could hear you yep. anyway got to the appointment and i said because your business is so important i want you to come and ask directly for our vip manager right and he was so thrilled he turned to his wife he's like gladys We've got a VIP appointment tomorrow. They were like, yay. And so I put in the serum. It. This guy's going to show. I know, right? That's what I always do when I make an appointment, show or not, right? And so the next day, they have a, an appointment board, the name's on there, and I'm watching serum. They don't show, no show. I said, hmm, did die? <laughs> so then I, um, I called. I finally reached him in the afternoon, and I'll never forget it. Oh, he no. said, he said, you know what? He goes, oh, we showed up. He said, I will never buy a car from you. And I go, what happened? Oh, VIP. He goes, yeah. guess what he said? He goes, you lied to me. <gasps> and I was raised Catholic. That's like, duh, duh, right? 
So, so um, what happened is, oh, they showed up. This is Milwaukee, oh, yeah. Wisconsin in the snow. The mm. wife's in a walker. Bring them all the way around. They came in early because old people are always early. Yep. And they were greeted by a sales associate named Jose. And he said, hi, no, thank you for coming in. And he said, we have a VIP appointment. Pointed his name and the salesman goes, oh, that's just something they say to get you in the door. Oh. I can help you. <gasps> oh my gosh. I was like, where's Jose? <laughs> and Jose should be promoted to management, right? Exactly. They're right going out. I think you should get a store. So the thing is, remember, it's left hand, right hand, left hand, right hand. So don't assume, you know, that, that you know what's happening or what's going on here. And please do yourself a favor before you just need your, why don't we just get to the, maybe calm, calm down and get to the truth. Or is this Graham Crumpy guy the other day goes, you know, he goes, how many Suburbans do you have? I only see one on your lot. And I said, well, how many do you need? He said one. I said, well, then I can help you. <laughs> we can do that. Yep. So Johnny, Johnny, I love this conversation. How do people get hold of you? What's the easiest way for people to reach oh, yeah, out and get hold of you? Oh, I would love to help people. So that's my favorite. Firstly, so, the book. Point us in the don't ask, don't ask me about cars, please. <laughs> okay, so the book. So to get the book, Amazon, I take it's the easiest way to eat yeah. the burrito. Mm -hmm. Eat the burrito. Mm -hmm. It can yeah. save your life. Okay, yeah. Joni Stuker Davis. Yeah. Um, You can call, call me or text me. My cell is 847-612-2128. 847-612-2128. Remember the time zones? Yes. I'm in the Chicago area. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. And oh, LinkedIn. and my email. Sorry, my email. Yeah. Joni, my name is really complicated. It's J O N I, Joni at ownerconnect.com. Owner Connect. Joni, thank you very much for that. I really appreciate it. Be, uh, I can't wait to see fun. you next time out at the NADA conference. I'm sure uh, you're not, you're not going to be in Dallas. I'm not, I, I, Dallas is the least attended by dealers. Let me help you. <laughs> so if you're a vendor, it's like there's like, it's like you feel like you're hawking view, right? There's like 10 vendors, the one little guy going, turns his badge around i don't feel like i'm a dealer bit um so i you know but i will be in new orleans the following year and i will see you there uh, okay i'll definitely get to see you there because that's a great fun town actually now before you go i need to practice what i preach and what i've learned from you so Joni, you've been in the industry for a long time you spoke to lots of good dealers and big hitters out there out of all the people you're thinking of who's the next person i should speak to about coming on the selling the motor trade podcast probably brian benstock oh why do you say brian uh, from, from Paragon, uh, he's, he's very smart, great marketer. Um, yep. I will send you his, I'll text you, you two together. Brilliant. And I can you use your name. Be wonderful. I can yeah, use yeah, your yeah. name to make it easy for yeah, you. Yeah, I helped I helped him with his BDC. And he's uh, going to say the same thing. Johnny's the, here goes that referral person again, but I believe I, in I, it. I, you know what? I normally ask that after we recorded this, but I thought, hold on. I need to I let people know. Down. Practice what we preach, okay? Let's ask for a referral. It's not in New York, New York, New York, Paragon, Honda, Paragon, Acura. Excellent dealer. Perfect. So, um, yeah, that's what Perfect. I would do. And I will text you, the two of you together, to say hello. Okay. Brilliant. Listen, it's been a pleasure, okay? Thank you very much. See you then. I loved it. I'll see you soon. Safe Bye. travels to you. Thank you. Bye. That just leaves me to say that all details of this episode and other episodes on the selling in the motor trade can be found on our website, simcotraining.co.uk. Go there to get a copy of our book, Words That Sell Cars. Go there to sign up to a free trial of our sales fitness online sales training program. Easiest way to get hold of me is Simon Bokert through LinkedIn. Thank you.